This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to make this material design pattern where it looks like it's made of waves that are layered on top of each other. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Master Class, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So getting started here in Inkscape, the first thing we want to do is just import this color palette. I'll put a link into the, in the description of the video. Uh, the design I'll be creating, I'll be using these colors specifically right here. So if you want to follow along with what I'm doing, you can uh, click the link and just copy and paste this image into Inkscape like I have here. Uh, otherwise, you could use whatever colors you'd like. So what we want to do first is just set up the documents so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to go to, I'm going to come up here to where it says view, make sure we have custom selected and then go to zoom and I'll zoom in at one to one and then I'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button over here we're gonna want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button right there and what I will create first is a giant square so I'm gonna come over here to the squares and rectangles tool and click on that and I'm just gonna hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the, on the canvas so that we create a perfectly symmetrical square like that I'm going to make sure that this is black. I'm going to bring the opacity down roughly in half, and I'm going to convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And what we want to do now is grab the, uh, the Draw Freehand Lines tool, which is over here. You could press F6 on the keyboard as a shortcut. And up here in the Tool Settings where it says Mode, we're going to want Spiro selected, Spiro Path. And where it says Smooth, I have mine set to 46. So somewhere thereabouts should be pretty good. It doesn't have to be exactly 46, but that setting right there is going to give us nice smooth lines. And what I want to do now is just draw a wavy line going through the bottom of this shape right here like that. Now that didn't give me the effect I was looking for, so I'm going to undo it by hitting Control Z. Let me try that again. Okay, that's a little better. That's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. I'll come up here and create another line, another wavy line like that. I may have to bring the smoothing down a little bit. You'll, have, you'll probably have to adjust the smoothing based on the size of your square here. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And now I'm going to create another line coming up here like that. There we go. I'll create another one down here like that. Another one up here. That one wasn't as smooth as I like. Right there. And I'll create one more coming through the top here like that. Maybe a little smoother than that. There we go, that works. All right, so once we've done that, I'm gonna grab the Select tool and I'm gonna hold Shift and click on all of the lines so that we have them all selected individually. We have them all selected at once like that. And what I wanna do now is combine them together by going to Path, Combine, and then I want to hold shift and click on the square so that we have the lines and the square selected and go to path division. And it's going to break that square up into individual pieces based on where those spiral lines were. And what we can do now is just bring the opacity back up to 100% like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my color palette here. Bring it. I'm going to bring it towards the shapes. I'm going to zoom in a little, a little bit by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And I'm going to click on this bottom shape right here, and I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is over here, or you could press D on the keyboard and just select on that to make it that color. And I want to go back to the select tool, which is up here. Click on that, and then make that the same color as well. And then just unify those two pieces together so that they're one object. So hold Shift and click on the other one so we have them both selected, and go to Path Union. And now what I will do is I will click on this object and do the same thing, grab the dropper tool. Since we're going to be going back and forth between this, the dropper tool and the select tool, I recommend using the keyboard shortcuts for this because it'll be much quicker. I'm just going to press D on the keyboard to grab that, and I'll just make it that color. And to switch back to the select tool, I'll press D again. And then I can click this object right here, press D, and I'll make it this color right here. And again, back to D, make it this color as well, unify that together. Actually, no. I want to make this one that color. Hold Shift, click on that, go to Path, Union. Come over here, make this one the lighter shade. Back up to the darker shade. 
could make this that medium shade. Or actually, no, I'll make it that peach color. Un unify those together by going to... What I just did there is I went to Path Union, but I did the keyboard shortcut by... Uh, I just clicked them both. I clicked them both, and I pressed Control, Shift, and Plus. And it just uni unified them together like that. Or you could just go to Path Union. I'll take this object right here. I will make this... Uh, the lighter shade. I'll make this one the lighter shade here because it's technically the same shape as this one. Let me unify those together. Control Shift Plus. And then I'll take this last shape right here and I will make this one, uh, let's say, the medium shade like that. No, no, I'll make this the darker shade. There we go. So that's what I'm looking for right there. And what I want to do now is I want to take the Select tool and I want to take each of these objects. I want to start at the top and I want to take the top object and I want to raise that to the top. And then I want to create, I want to take the next object down and raise that to the top as well. Take the next one down, raise that to the top, and then just go in descending order, taking each object and raising it to the top. And that's going to make it so that the object at the very bottom is the one that's layered on the top, and each object in descending order is layered beneath it, which is important for what we're going to do next. So now we're going to put a little bit of a drop shadow behind each object to create the illusion that each of these waves are made of like a, a separate material that's layered on top of each other. So let me take this object. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate that. And I'm going to make that one black. And I'm going to lower this one step to put it beneath the original object. And I'm going to take the blur over here and just bring that up a little bit like that. It's going to give it a nice blur. Right about there is pretty good. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of these objects. Let me take this one right here. Control D to duplicate. Make that black bring it down, uh, page down. I like to use the page down key for that. So I'm just going to press page down once, twice, three. There we go. It took three times to get it there. Bring the opac bring the uh, blur up on that a little bit. Do the same thing over here. Control D. Make this black. Page down a few times until it goes beneath the original object. And then give it a blur. And I'm sure you get the idea by now. We're just going to go through and do the same thing to these other shapes. Control D. Make this black page down until, there we go, until it goes beneath the original, just like that. And once we're finished, we pretty much have our, our material design pattern set. What we can do is we can click and drag over all of it and group it together with this button up here that says group. And let me just scale this down a little bit. And you can use this as a uh, as like a pattern for like a clipping path or something. For this example, I'll use, for the thumbnail, I'll use the Inkscape logo. But for this tutorial, I'll use some text. Let me show you here. I'm just going to write uh, material design. I want to grab, uh, let me grab the text tool. I want to make this some thick text. Um, what am I looking for? Montserrat black, a really heavyweight font like that. Let me go back to the text tool over here. Let me bring down the spacing between those letters. There we go. I'll bring this over here, make this a little bit bigger by holding Control and Shift and scaling it up. And then select both of them and go to Object, Clip, Set. And as you can see there, we have some text that's made of that material design right there. Now, this text wasn't exactly a good example because you can't see much of the design. But if we have like a different shape, uh, like let's say a star or something, let me grab a star. And I'll clip that in there as well. Let me see how that works. Go to Object, Clip, Set. And there you go. And you should get the idea. You can do anything you want with that pattern. You can use logos, icons, text, stars, whatever you want to do. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating that material design pattern using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.